I'm Marco Bone, and I can tell you your name. I've got tricks in my knuckles, sometimes, sometimes like anyone. Your drums, boys, in the hurry, hurry, hurry. He remembers beginnings, hours, circuses, a butterfly in Wisconsin, how his birthday was turned into a lock. What happened, Terry? The boy Houdini is practicing with a rope end. The promise. He was 12, and he knew one thing. Two things. He knew locks, and what else? How to pick up needles with my eyelids. The boy Houdini is running. It's his birthday. His father calls him in and says, Eric, the boy was born Eric Weiss. Promise me something. <laughs> yes, father. What? His father was old and religious. His mother was young and beautiful. His father never got used to anything, not America or speaking English or raising money for the temple. He's a rabbi, maybe God he's used to. He's a progressive, yes, but he lives by proverbs and they tell him it's a sin to be a magician. What, father? Marco Bone takes on the character of Houdini's father. Your motto. There is a complex feeling and pressure in Houdini's body and voice. Something about mother? You won't do anything for her? Yes. Say after me, I swear. I swear that I will. That I will. Take care of. Take care of. Mother. Mother. She must not come. She must not come. To want. To want. This is the key. This word. You're a good boy, Eric. I'm old. I'm old. You do not look old! I'm not his father. I'm Marco Bone, and this is a free fantasy on the situation of Houdini. It's an American myth of the escape artist, a play of people fiercely involved in magic, denial, extreme physical life, attempts at communication, and the juggling of images of themselves. It is made in continual transformations, beginning with Coney Island. He is 19 now and doing a magic act in high school, playing with acid. This statement announces the transformations of our play and wards off any charges that it is biographical. It allows for Marco Bone's sense of wonder. It invites the ensemble to reappear as Coney Island people here at the school where Houdini is performing as a fledgling. For we are coming to his first day of life as a magician what he wants to be, what he must be, with the drive behind every drop of his blood. Song. Show me the seed. You, you show, show me. me. 
The ensemble are now Coney Island people. A chorus girl, a sailor, a fat man, a nurse crying. Shame! And Don't touch it! An invisible little boy she is chasing. It is the bright colored world of touch and live to Houdini and the opening of the whole world to Beatrice. Houdini and Beatrice enter. She is wearing the pink dress as she comes into her new world, the protected and demure girl, but ready for whatever comes next with Houdini. He is callow, unformed, a young fellow with a job, moonlighting with card tricks and clumsy attempts. He wears a gray suit and a loud tie. They are on the boardwalk, deep in talk. Don't you believe me? That's a lot to ask on the first date. She advances and withdraws. That is her movement. They reach the rail. Harry Houdini. There's the whole sea. Clams, seashells, wax paper, beer, burnt metal, fry fat, tar. Anything else? Pee pee. You're a little kid. Your voice shakes and you're a grown man. When did you know? When the acid spilled. Mother wanted you put in jail. The burn ran down your dress. Would it have hurt me? Let's go down. They jump down to the sand. We see the dark under the boardwalk, the lovers under there, people changing their clothes. I've never been anywhere. We'll go everywhere there is. You know, I'm still stuck in that necktie factory. There are cries, some near, some very faint. Shame! Shame! Come find me! I'm not lost. Music from a faraway carousel. That's a song when the acid spilled. They laugh. He picks up the song. He sings in a strange voice. Rosabelle, my Rosabelle, I love you more than I can tell. Come on, sing after me. Over me, you cast a spell. I love you, my sweet Rosabelle. I love you, my sweet... Why did they make me stay away from here? Away from Peter, away from anything. Fifty Hail Marys! I may be working here. <laughs> Coney Island? Your voice is beautiful. You're really at home here, aren't you? Houdini holds out his hand. A movement travels from it into his body. It's kind of tremor, but I mustn't tremble. It's my chance here. I have to see what I can really do. You do magic. Not really magic. Don't shield me. I'm not a child. Houdini juggles nothing in the two rhythms on his two arms. Bim, bam, boozle. Got it. What do you want it to be? A burning star. Like you. There's nothing there. Just some fast finger work. You like my tricks, don't you? They make me afraid. Control that. That's what I do. I have to control my fear in every muscle in my body. Body. I train my hands, my fingers, my thumbs, my... What fear? A promise I made when I was 12 to take care of someone. I ran away. How do you find money? If all you know how to do is pick up needles with your eyelids. You knew locks. You know fear. You could go anywhere with that. He looks at her narrowly, suddenly seeing all that she has for him. I know locks. A lock is a lake, and I want to swim through it. I'd like to be in the ocean with you. Come under the boardwalk. Uh, how do you pick up needles with your eyelids? You place a needle on a plain piece of paper. You stare straight at it. You don't move your eyes until the needle is all you see. Then slowly you lower your head towards it. It blurs out into a gray shape, and your eyelashes just touch the paper. You begin to close your eyelids until they touch the needle. You control your muscles, and you control your fear. Now you know all. You could do anything. The people on the beach are still for a moment. Look, they're stones, statues of themselves. You can see what they need. Look, we could have a mind reading act. Harry, if you bend me over, they'll think we're kissing. 
Look, you if you could stand up and say uh, and if you could stand up now and say to them, my fear, look what I do with it. When I touch you, I know. Somebody like you, you could lead them along. Now you're in my act. Sign the agreement. Lifetime secrecy. We'll be famous. I love you. He moves towards her, loses focus as if she were the needle. He kisses her, fiercely. Yes! Don't cry. Yes, cry. Will you be punished? That's the least of it. If you were mine, I wouldn't let them punish you. I'm going to get a job here. Marco Bone appears with a stamp of his tall pole, speaking to them. Interesting here, ain't it? Plenty to do for two, lots of ways to do it. And here's Marco! Marco! It begins with a B. Bess. Yes, Bess in her dress. Better than new. I'm going to see the big boss. I'm going to try for that job. Don't leave me. Houdini turns away. Don't terrify the lady, Marco. The shooting gallery appears. A long, horizontal row of targets, curious emblems painted on them. Not for the world, my dear. Houdini exits. Beatrice goes with Marco Bone to the shooting gallery, and a crowd gathers round. Try your hand, try your hand. Some are easy, some are hard. Here's the key to your first house, the hand of Mozart, the cloud by day, to lead you across the desert, the mirror you know so well. Here's the left breast of Cleopatra and Antony's cock. Beatrice shoots at the first target when Marco Bone gives her a pole to shoot with. Then she gives to the gun to the sailor, who hits all the targets. The last one shoots back at him. Marco Bone addresses Beatrice. You're in the country of the targets, and the guns too, of course. What do you get when a gun marries a target? A clarinet. A congressman. <laughs> she passes the test. He likes her fantasy, and he begins to accept her. You like Harry's act, don't you? Obviously. Beatrice is being led into her new life. During this song, she realizes it fully. Still wary of each other, Marco Bone and Beatrice both love Houdini, and they begin to recognize it in the other. Song. It's like a tap dance or a new pink dress, a shit naive feeling saying yes. Some say good morning, some say God bless, some say possibly, some say yes, some say never, some say unless. It's stupid and lovely to rush into yes. What can it mean? It's just like life. One thing to you, one to your wife. Some go local, some go express, some can't wait to answer yes. Some complain of strain and stress. Their answer may be no for yes. Some like failure. Some like success. Some like yes, 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 yes. Open your eyes, dream, but don't guess. Your biggest surprise comes after, yes. Your biggest surprise Your biggest surprise comes after comes after Houdini enters. I got the job. No more neckties. He produces a pair of scissors and cuts his tie off. Let's get married? Yes! <laughs> the ribbon tap dance to the music of yes, with long colored streamers as the whole ensemble dances. One brings in a glass and cloth, the one remnant to Jewish wedding. On the last note of the dance, Houdini smashes the glass triumphantly. It shatters. Song. Some complain of strain and stress. Their answer may be no for yes. Some like failure, some like success. Some like yes, 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 yes! Open your eyes. Dream, but don't guess. Your biggest surprise comes after yes. All exit. But, Marco Bone, he reports on the wedding and the homecoming, speaking again directly to the audience. Yes, I was the best man. They were married by Boss McCain. He gave Harry his job that afternoon and gave his blessing to Bess and the boy that night. Sure, nobody cried. The whole thing happened in royal humor. Sure, he took her home to mother. Sure, Cecilia takes in rumors. Sure, she governs the traffic. Sure, Harry was sent to bed alone. 
Sure, Bess has just stopped crying, alone on the thinnest mattress on the floor of the passageway across the hall. Skinnier than anyone, that mattress is, except bone. Does marriage change the color of things? Yes. I wouldn't let anybody separate me. But then, I'm a divorced man. Houdini enters Beatrice's room. There is a long embrace. One pillow is on the little bed. We'll go to a hotel tomorrow. Here, sign this. What's the time? I don't know. 10.20 p.m. Thank you. What are you doing? Reading it. Don't you trust me? It's a diagram. Your family tree. You like it? Your mother's on one side of you, I'm on the other. Harry Houdini, it's a burial plot. Stay with me always. A lasting proof. <laughs> I gave you proof today. I married you. Sign it. I need it. She signs. Houdini takes the pen, writes a short note, and pins it to the pillow. For the morning. It tells you everything. Tell me now. I'll be up and gone at six. The note will tell you. Where will you be? Mother wakes me in time for two hours of exercise and training every day. Training. You know, bim, bam, boozle. Fingers of fire. The blazing man. Houdini takes a black bandage from his sleeve. With a trick up his sleeve. What are you doing? Putting on my night eyes. I like my night eyes. What would you want in the whole world, Bess? Anything you want. You know what I'd love? I'd love to be in your acts with you, if you like. You are everything, standing on a mountain streaming fire from your hands and feet. And my head and my sex streaming fire and sperm in perfect control. Yes, and everyone watching. I watch too. All our faces. Beatrice wipes her forehead with her hand. Their whole bodies are engaged. It is herself she is describing. Gleaming. Gleaming. Their eyes open as never before. My eyes closed as never before. Touching. We are all watching you. And I am touching. Yes. The magic. Beatrice is lying on the pillow with Houdini. She rouses into her dream of fantasy. She lifts her arms. Houdini enters her fantasy. He goes to the center of the stage and speaks. More than mountains, higher than the high clouds, we begin, flock together. Further than man has ever flown, traveling freely in freefall, love. Flying with all the powers, discovering each other, our long dance. Down the air, down the hours, deep into our lives, our life, flying fuck, discovery, discovery. He goes back to her in the pillow. They sleep. There is a knock at the door facing the window. Houdini is called to his morning. He rouses and exits. Beatrice wakes to see the great face of Cecilia hanging over her. It is a masked face on a woman's body. The face is strong and haunting, but it is basically the face of Beatrice, older, with the hypnotic eyes of Houdini. The woman's body under it is young and voluptuous, fuller than the body of Beatrice, but the same height. The members of the ensemble speak in the voice of Basilia. Her color is the pink we know. Here is the household indoctrination. Two hours now for his joints and muscles. Two hours later for his books. Uh, muscles? Two hours later in the magic stores, he buys his flicks. Someday, he'll invent them all. Magic. Then, his shirts must be done just so. Magic. Not too much starch, but a little. Magic. Check all the buttons. Muscles. Then there are French cuffs. Put out the cufflinks. Magic muscles. He has only one shirt with French cuffs just now. He plans his time to be minute. Thank you. He's very aware of time. Time. You'll keep the clock bound. Magic. Time. He weighs and wheels his body. He's really a man of ritual. You'll see. Man. Ritual. Man. Exit Cecilia. Beatrice reads the note on the pillow. 
in my best. You give me my real life. Behind my night eyes, I see you. I need you looking at me. Thank you, the way you are with her. Tonight we'll go to a hotel. I love you. Act one, scene two. The Houdinis arrive at a circus in New England on a rainy Sunday night. The circus is bankrupt. Some of its people are in jail for breaking the blue laws that say no performances on a Sunday. The circus performers who are left are highly colored, desperate, going on because there is nothing else. They see use for Houdini when he is able to get out of a locked trunk and use for Beatrice when she says that she will do anything for her husband. They need a lot of singing and stealing. Grattan, the circus man, leads Houdini to the jail, where he is able to free the others, chiefly Volante, the high wire artist and fortune teller. Back at the circus, Houdini makes a deal that includes hiring Marco Bon. The circus pulls out. Song. You don't know what you're missing if you're missing the circus tonight. You don't know what you're missing if you're missing the circus tonight. You don't know what you don't know if you haven't seen the whole show at the circus tonight! The ensemble are circus people. This is Grattan's Circus on a bad night in New England. Heavy rain, the sound of a train fairly near, then diminishing. A few people standing around getting supper. A Spanish dancer, three clowns, Mrs. Murphy, the gun juggler, Grattan, a gambling man at a low point. He is a big man, an exaggeration in everything he does. Around them, the worn, glorious, red and gold of the shabby circus. At one side, a roaring tiger face, its mouth open as a huge door. A big, brass-bound trunk, center foreground. My God, how much rain can there be? There are fish in the mouse traps. We'll go to the circus. Only Noah will be left, and he has his own. Anybody get here? The ensemble stand in the entrance. Only the Houdinis. Where's Fritz with the money? Well, good, the Houdinis. What can they do? Anything. When do we eat? Inter, Mincy, Tinsy, Tool, Alabama Domino, Ochre Coker Domino Ochre. Two minutes, boss. Where's Chow? Go down the road and pick up something. Do you see anything? One house, all dark in the evening, a big kitchen, and a meat market with a cat sitting in the window, and some good windows that were partly open. Just get it back here soon. Woods and an Epictetus, exit. Have a chair, Miss Houdini. Here's how we'll do it. First, the sideshow. Ever done fortune telling? Well, Volante will break you in. In the tent, Houdini to do magic. What I saw you do at Tony Pastor's, only more of it. Stretch it. Well, hand over your clothes, you two. I'll hang them up. Can you let them have a towel, bud? Sure, just for now. And the handcuff act, but not refined. Lots of bracelets. Let them come out of the audience and snap them on your arms, if they've bought a ticket to the sideshow. What sideshow? Oh, a month from now. Freaks. And of course, you both are in the parade. 25 a week in cakes. Everything satisfactory? Mr. Grattan, what's cakes? Never been under the canvas, eh? If I had a wife, that's the second thing she'd know. Cakes, that's grub, such as it is chow. What we're waiting for now? Whitson, how about it? Are we sending some down to the girls? Some of our people are having steak with the sheriff. Whitson and Epictetus come back with the food. Chow from my mouth. Chili from the south. Beans from the east. Meat from the west. Ice cream north. Drink from the rye. Water from the sky. I live high. <laughs> Here are the new ones. The Houdinis, Harry and Bess. We're missing a few, you know. Our seductive Volante walked into it. And the rest of our people are in the clink for breaking the blue laws. Or so they said. God, Sunday around here. Hell's the only place open. Mm -hmm. Really, for freely the sheriff, or not freely the sheriff. This Volante? Our seductive Volante. Dancer, acrobat, high wire artist. Anything that moves like a woman. They ain't met us yet! <laughs> Get Murphy off the bottle. Oh well, no show tonight. <clears throat> this is Bill, our man of steel. 
<laughs> Miss Murphy, the juggler, you should see her five guns. This is Ariana, the Spanish fly. The clowns, Whitson and Epictetus, they double as dwarfs and they're the angels and the living statues. And little Henry Thoreau, Miss Murphy's kid, he's inside the automaton writing and drawing. There's your formal hello. How many handcuffs can you get out of in 10 minutes? He can get out of any lock. You, you took me on as an expert, didn't you? What have you got around here? He's got a strong box. Nothing in it. Leave the box out. Houdini goes to the trunk and takes it. Yes, made in Boston. Reinforced, inside and out. Lock me in. He gets in the trunk and pulls the lid down. They fasten the hasps down, then the big lock. Beatrice flings her shawl over the top of the trunk. He can't get out of that. Can't he? We could use a man who could get out of anything. That's me. Houdini is out. <laughs> Bill, give him back his watch. Bill, who has lifted the watch, returns it. He hates to do it. Anyone can do that. Bill climbs in. Look, Houdini, let's go for a walk. In this rain? First things first. If you can do a lock like that, you know, that's a pickety rooskel down there. It looks solid. But I have an idea. I just do that for show, Mr. Groton. The way you got out of that trunk. Look, boy, I saw you at Tony Pastor's, and the noise and the smoke. A lot of green kids, amateurs trying their stuff. Young hopefuls, nothing much. Then this youngster, full of fire, full of sex, yourself. Full of pride, full of muscle. Fireworks over a city asleep. Breaking your lungs to get out of those chains, and everybody could see. But what did you have in those places? Bottom billing, if anything. Why don't you ask where the animals are? All right, where are they? Fool! We don't have any. But we could. We could light out of here and go straight up. And that's what will happen if you do what's needed, boy. You'll be up there. Everybody will know what you are. But if you're fool enough to say no, the whole deal is off. Because of the spot I'm in. Jake didn't show up with his little black bag full of spinach, and they're in the clink. And we're through. Half our people. And no billing for you. No modern master of mystery. Yes. I'll get my coat. She's an asset. Absolutely no. Not possible. Thus, you stay here. I'll be back. Harry, please. All right. Safe home. What is the exact time? 6.15 p.m. Coming, Houdini? Which way to the clink? Houdini and Ren go out. Sounds are heard from inside the trunk. Never mind. He can't get out. It makes me feel shut in myself. Yes, honey. Me too. What kind of songs do you sing? Anything. Hear that? Like your man. Anything. I think he expects to do tricks. Screamers, hoops. He's working on invention. Inventions? He better do what Grattan tells him. Or you'll find a way. Hey, Wixen. Well, we're persuasive. He wouldn't like an accident on his hands, would he? Never mind about him. What about you? I'm his assistant. And more, also. We'll teach you to be at the tent flap while the crowd is coming in. Sometimes there's quite a bit of cash. Uh, no. Nothing too risky, child. Uh, take him up with the magic man himself. If he ever gets back. I'll do whatever it takes to help Harry. Can you, even when you're yelling, can you, to get them ready for Galanti and her high wire, can you, when we're nipping most of your clothes up? Try me. Try her. You could be a clown too. Not yet. I don't think he can get out of there. Oh, he's all right. Get the paint box. She's worried about her husband. Let her alone. On my face. Get the key, Whitson. Bill gets out of the box. <laughs> Whitson, Epictetus, and Bill exit. They have songbook privileges for the circus, and we could cut you in on that. They sing like a rusty door. There should be a few cents in there somewhere for you. Pod enters with the paint box. Here, I'll do it. And you, get her clothes. Your husband's crazy about you. And his work, isn't he? He takes delight in what he does. His skills. He likes being loaded down and confined. He likes even more to break out. He loves to be watched. 
You've been married less than a year? Yes. Your mother pleased about it? She hasn't spoken to me since. Fainted on the spot, didn't she? She thinks I married a jailbreaker. Guess he learned his stuff while he was doing time. No, he never. What does Volante really do, Mrs. Murphy? Volante dances on air. Up there, she stands on it, feels it, pulls secrets out of it, sends her body through it. Sometimes I hate her. <laughs> Here is her element. Which in an Epictetus return. A most adequate introduction to these associations that bode well in your fee, in excess of your salary, will be two dollars for fourteen shows. How do you like it? I like it very much. When we get our pay. <laughs> no, honey, you'll get yours. If you don't mind my asking, how do you manage that? Well, now, honey, I wouldn't ask too many questions. That's Volante's territory. She has a right. We pass through audience. We're selling ice cream and song sheets, right? Well, they've got pockets, lovely, and the If we weren't here, we'd be off at the wars, picking a pocket. Wars are for dead men. Wars are for jerks. I want a woman. Beatrice stands up. She wears a pointed yoke of lace and tights. Her painted face is very moving. Like fireworks! Volante bursts through the tiger's mouth. Houdini, Grattan, and the fat girl follow. Out of that place! My wonders! Bring me my robe! Your best! Your Volante! Volante addresses Houdini. My liberator! Pack everything. We're clearing out. He picked those locks like chestnuts. It was a pleasure. What is the time? Beatrice looks for her watch and gets it back from one of the clowns. <laughs> it's exactly 6.55 p.m. Free at 6.55 post-meridian. Give them some whiskey and some chow that's really hot. Some speed there. Beatrice asks Houdini about her costume. Like it? We'll keep it. He picked those locks like chestnuts. Come on. We don't swallow that. Sure, he dissolved the jail. Lock man, he's a master pickpocket. We were locked in, he got us out. There are chains, there is freedom, there are keys. Is there anything else besides opening locks that fascinates you, Mr. Houdini? The details of a lock interest me. The sliding bow or shackle, the bolts of the older kind of lock, the padlock, the kind that hangs on something, the one with tumblers. Where are tumblers? Where keys, we open them. The ancient locks found in Nineveh made of wood, the ones on chastity belts, the Yale lock that has a tongue on its back which projects into the lock itself, the latest protector locks that must have a little play, and the movement called tentative. Duplex locks of three kinds, talus motion, easy action, and scotch spring. Do you know there are locks that will open at a whisper? The whisper is the key. Do you know about the sleep of locks? Like us, they rest. Sometimes they have to be jarred away, kicked away, jiggled, and they start working again. They have bodies, and I think they love and hate. What kinds of words do you have for your own body? Who has words for such things? What's this called beside an armpit? What's this beside the inside of the elbow? What's this, the back of the knee? Some medical student told me post the teller. That can't be right, can it? You mean vulnerable places. Female places, I think they are? All are vulnerable, male or female. My body is an instrument of my work. I work to know it, make it stronger, more sensitive, more vulnerable, more aware. All this stuff about locks? Wait till he discovers bagels. <laughs> Why don't you ask what else you do? I read it from the face of my wife. What do you do, boy? He is drinking through this. Suppose you could open that strong box? Not interested. Have one? Houdini never drinks. Thank you, not just now. I knew you the first moment at Tony Pastor's, in the slop in the old smoke, among the green kids and halfway kids, and then a youngster like yourself, full of pride, full of muscle, full of sex, full of skill. Breaking your lungs you were, and letting us see. 
Well? I'm to be a clown, as well as a magician and a lock expert. Sure, and everything else. Drum thumper, acrobat, mind reader, clairvoyant. I'm no good at talking. They'll swallow anything. You know what else they want? Sometimes they howl for a wild man. He eats raw meat and cigars. He chews the heads off chickens. Can you roar? <laughs> sure you can roar. You're Borneo if you're staying. Uh, I'm staying if you take my manager, Marco Bone. Houdini is inflated. He has no manager. Grattan holds his head. One more. He runs a shooting gallery. Every place needs a shooting gallery. First week's salary in advance. Dimes, we've got zero. We've got Houdini. Houdini is already in the trunk. It opens out into an entire world, starlit, lit red and dark, the red and gold of the circus turned into something even further, a reach of space. Houdini's movements in the trunk carry a great sureness that there is a way out, a kind of tunnel. He touches the ideas of the lock. All of the parts of his body are touched by these. As Houdini rises from the trunk, he reaches down behind him and pulls Marco Bone up with him and out. Of course I'm with you, but only out of season. When Coney Island opens, back to the shooting gallery. Marco Bone sees Volante. Don't tell me. It begins with a V. Everybody's mind readers around here. We should be rich. So, when you see a woman riding the air, well, you see a woman playing with fire, a woman made of storm and desire, and loves to dream with the whole damn zoo. But you can be sure, whatever I do, that I need my beer and bacon too. I wake up every night at 4 a.m. and I tell my dreams to the man who's there. Dreams of animals not like him, a woman who rides on fire and air, but loves to dream with the whole damn zoo. But you can be sure, whatever I do, that I need my beer and bacon too. My dreams ride out from the highest of wire. Bodies like bubbles of color down there. The fill of people of flesh and fire streaming towards me in the air. But I make it clear, whatever I do, that I need my beer and bacon too. The scene shifts. Houdini and Beatrice are in their room, really, their circus truck, really deep into their privacy. Can you really chop a woman to bits? I could kiss you to bits. No more Bot and Billy after a dog act. We'll do it all. You walked out of your house. You ran away when you were 12. I went back. You never did. I saw something so powerful on the beach that day. I can stream flame from my fingers and toes and sex and every inch of me. I begin to speak. I say something that makes everyone stand up and cry out. You do something to make me cry out. What do you say? I don't know. Or I won't talk. Or I don't want to talk. The scene shifts back to Volante and Marco Bone. Then you travel. Back to Coney Island. Not just now. Now I set up the targets. And the sheriff? No, the sheriffs never catch up with us. In a thousand tank towns, the Houdinis show what they can do. They read minds and they tell customers the sex of their children, born and unborn. The Houdini sends shivers up the spines of thousands. He chops her up. He sends her up a rope standing in the air. The old Indian rope trick. She fights for her song, a lovely woman fighting for a song and the extra two dollars every week. He pitches the tent like anybody. It all adds up. Song. Hard, Hard times, times, terrible times. We're, we're down, down to nickels, nickels and, and dimes. dimes. Maybe your sons and daughters will get their hands. Dollars and quarters. Maybe oil. Diamonds and steel. Maybe an airplane or an automobile. But now all we've got is the steering wheel. But just now. All that's real? Is what we feel. <laughs> and that ain't steel. Not oil. Not diamonds. Hard times. Terrible times. We're, We're down, down to nickels, nickels and dimes. dimes. Sure, I do seances. People want to believe that. You lead their eyes, you pull a string. You lead the bull. Houdini is a torero. They want it. The minute I can, no more seances. 
I'm convinced there's more money to be made once they see who I am. A real escape artist. Tell your fortune, Bill Wilkin. No thanks. Against my religion. And what religion would that be? What I live by. Pompous as ever. And, of course, born Jewish. My father said we're not magicians because of what Moses did. Kill the Egyptian? There's that. But you know how they, when they were in the desert? No water, but there was the cloud by day. And God told Moses to strike the rock with his staff. Water gushed forth. Moses let them believe it was all his doing. He didn't give credit. That's why he wasn't allowed into the promised land. And we're not to be magicians. In whose credit? Oh, I see. But you're a magician. Come on. You know better. I'm an illusionist. Same difference. Want your fortune told? Beatrice enters with a huge flat basket. She is dressed in lace yoke and tights. Some people will do anything. Houdini exits. Volante turns to speak to Beatrice. Tell your fortune, young lady. Not by feeling, Volante. Your fortune's all over you, Bess. Devoted and not devoted. Hot and cold. Afraid and not afraid. Giving, withholding, and set on having your life. Like him. Loving, loving, loving. Come hell or high water. That's not my fortune. That's what I started out with. That's the foundation. Houdini enters with a coiled rope and a sword. All right, set it up. The disappearing woman. The basket is in the middle of the stage with the rope coiled flat in the bottom. Beatrice gets into the basket, curled. She raises her back once to show the audience she is there. Then Houdini puts the lid on the basket Calls, All right. and begins to thrust the sword into the basket at one place after another. Beatrice pushes the lid off, shows him that all is well, and subsides again. Volante watches. Houdini makes thrust after thrust with the sword. Enter the magic. The pillar of smoke stands stage center. Standing on air, the cloud by day, a woman climbing the cloud. Sex in the cloud, a climbing woman. She begins to dissolve the woman in pieces. Slowly, they rise up woman again. The woman turns into air. Houdini has disappeared. Beatrice takes the rope and sword and exits. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what you have all been howling for, the man who comes out of the jungle as he is in the flesh, untamed, untrained. He's got a language all on his own. So ladies, watch out. You don't get pulled apart limb for limb. Here he is, your wild man, Borneo. Houdini, Beatrice, Volante, and the ensemble perform the dance, Borneo. Houdini leaps out at high stage, naked except for fur colors. The women of the ensemble scatter before him in mock fear, yelping, growling, barking. When the men shake their banners, they identify with the woman and with Borneo when turned, but it goes to Borneo in a standing excitement. The women of the ensemble are on their backs, in rows, legs waving before Borneo. Volante is in the foreground, delighted, pretending fear. It is delightful and it is primitive, and it rules out anything that is not exclusively physical. At the height, Volante calls out, One more time! The beat comes to its strongest. At the end of Borneo, Beatrice is thrust through Houdini's legs, beneath him, in place of Volante. The ensemble exits in their wagon. Harry! Did I terrify you, Bess? Borneo took over! Well, only for a moment. Borneo knows, you know. I want to get out of this circus. I love your wildness. What I use is control. But no more going around cemeteries for the information for mind-reading acts. You know you love that. The ensemble speaks as Cecilia. The glad god is a trap, Illich. Borneo's a trap. I want them to look at me. I want to do something they'll believe. The only real things I've done are make myself stronger, have you, and get Volante out of jail. I see a man in pieces. His beautiful, strong legs and trunk and arms all severed and on the ground. That's you. It's the Indian rope trick. Slowly, the man in pieces begins, begins to come together. His a great golden snake is wound around his arms and legs, and he stands up. I adore him. 
The ensemble speaks to Cecilia. Does iron bars fall away? There'll be something about a jail. You're right, Bess. The pieces are joining. I want to talk to Mother. I want to work out something with Marco Bone. Marco Bone appears. All you have to do is break out of the strongest jail there is. Marco! It's fallen, Coney Island. Marco Bone and Houdini hug. They're nailing up the Tunnel of Love for winter. You should have your own show. No more Borneos. Yes. Bess, a new dress, prettier than ever. Here's what I propose. The strongest jail. I'll get the word on it. Some money will bring the reporters and a couple of photographers. I'll have them ready for you. They'll strip you, Harry. Just so the pictures are made. They'll strip and search you. They lock you up, your clothes in one cell, you in another. And then... They take pictures. They'll search you for a key. Thoroughly. Act 1, Scene 3. The city jail. The warden's office is before us at the side. The prisoners are in their cells, seen as Houdini sees them in a place of great excitement, a place he can break out of. The colors are brilliant, green bays for the warden's office. The locks are glass bricks, like water. The colors fluoresce. The bars are black. Even the door in the warden's office is treated in this way. All the keys are lucite. They glow. <laughs> Beatrice is with the warden. She is very flirtatious, jaunty in a way we have not seen, aggressive. The warden is a great beefsteak of a man, sure of his vigor and authority, with no nerves at all. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I said something very rude. Fool he was to stop at all. When we step out, the evening won't end like that. Tonight, the warden comes around the desk, takes Beatrice in his arms. There is a knock at the door. The turnkey puts his head in. He's still snooping around, boss. The warden stands back, official again. Bring him in, then. Have a heart. We're doing a story about you, Warden. Mr. Who in has plenty to go on. With your notes, honey. Houdini enters with the doctors. The doctors strip him and begin to examine him. Marco Bone enters. Here we are, murderer's row. One, two, three, four. All right, Who in. What is the exact time? Houdini gives a meaningful out look to Beatrice with a slight humorous resentment of the warden. What is the exact time? 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 6.48 p.m. 6.48 p.m. 6.48 p.m. 6.48 p.m. Beatrice exits. Examine him, gentlemen, as only a physician can. The doctors begin the physical examination. Mouth? Nose. Anus. Eyes. Toenails. Fingernails. Ears. Mouth. Nose. Anus. Eyes. Any scars? No scars. No fresh wounds. He's a fool. How could he think those doors would open? But he's got the finest physique I ever saw. So long, Luton. See you in the morning. Houdini is passed into a cell. Where are your clothes? <laughs> I hawk them. What are you in for? What are you in for? I want to open this lock. Me too. Nobody opens Joe Guitar's place. Who's Joe Guitar? This is his cell. He killed the president. You killed Garfield? Houdini is working fast. <laughs> Joe Guitar did. I put a pillow over your wife. Now! Houdini opens the door. Come out! Houdini brings the man out. He goes to the next cell, points. What's he? Child Knifer. Houdini points along the cells. And him? And him? Uh, cop killer! Mass rapist! Nothing much. Houdini opens two of the doors for forcibly, sexually, a third lock with a whisper. He wakes the fourth. He moves the prisoners each into another cell. They react in their own ways. There is fighting among the prisoners. What the hell are you doing, man? Me in his cell? No! And now the next lock. Can you get me out of here? Houdini looks at him in despair. No. Warden! Get this man out! Warden! Warden! Houdini speaks to the warden, who is in the jail almost as much as the others. What are you in for? The warden realizes the change. Can't be done. You're made, young fellow, by God. I'll get these locks changed. 
We'll get new ones invented. This will never be done again. Houdini. That's the name I'll remember. You're the greatest of them all. And your wife. Where's she gone? Houdini does not answer the warden. He addresses the prisoners with intensity. Forgive me. He did it. He's made. Houdini stands in the outer jail. What was the time? Three minutes, ten seconds. He, he did, did it. it. He's, He's made. made. Got any ice cream? Get the man some ice cream. He did it. He's made. Get the man some ice cream. It was better than I hoped. Marco, you're my personal manager. You'll start at, I don't know. When the papers hit the street, you're as good as rich. Can the shooting gallery wait? In the hope of the resurrection. And the strong lady, her true love? I might have a new true love. You are made. Who's the man in solitary? You wouldn't care to know him. What did he do? You answer one question. How did you do it? I swam through. Come on, boys. I'll see you at the house. Now they'll be saying, Houdini, Houdini, let me out. I can't even get you out. Where is Mrs. Houdini? Song. The man who opened my prison door has put me back in jail. No chance to plead my innocence or get out of here on bail. Someone showed me free and drove me deeper in my misery. Oh, hostility, hostility. The man who showed me my freedom, a man who never did time, he made it a shell game, freedom, shuffling grave and crime. Someone showed me free. He switched my punishment and misery. Oh, hostility, hostility. The scene transforms to the Houdini's home. Reporters come in, as do Houdini, Marco Bone, Beatrice, and Volante. The ensemble are reporters in the doorway and children. Sure, he had something hidden. But the doctor said he was clean. Those locks were fixed for you, come on. One more picture, the children speak up. Find some money in my ear. Disappear me, Houdini. <laughs> I thought your brother would object to nakedness. The ensemble speaks in Cecilia's voice. Would, would you, you expect, expect the children, children in the fiery furnace to keep their clothes on? I need something else. There you were, opening the doors. The ensemble speaks again in Cecilia's voice. He needs to throw himself against all things. You walked right out of that jail. A way through. The ensemble speaks in Cecilia's voice. A way through. through. I'll just go out and see those children. Who did he exit? Sounds like an escape hatch to me. All that boo for all about an escape hatch? Brightest thing since the oubliette. It's really a tunnel he's talking about. You're not closed in. Everybody has a passage if you work with the forces. What about the mystery of the sealed room? Or the bird and the egg? The, cheek, the chick feeds on the walls of his room, and at the last moment he's strong enough. His prison cell is only a shell. But the chick has grown a tooth to peck with, a uh, pecker. What do you see, Valenti? I see my prophet man, announcing the, ma the magician. Am I your man? Valenti does not answer. Well, Beatrice, he's beginning to talk to them. That's your doing. Marco, Bowen, and Beatrice, shake hands. I always wanted to be your friend. Not when you turned up wearing the dress his mother made for you. You gave me a dragon look when you thought I didn't see. I didn't know what you'd want from him. And now? Now, I know you help him and star to him and are always there for him. Like you, in a way. You're the star in heaven with his red companion. He's the star in heaven with his red companion. Close, Marco. Beatrice goes to Houdini. Have you heard how the basket was woven about him in Holland? Have you heard how he was sealed in a paper bag and left it intact, which is more than the way most things are left? Have you heard how he collected signed affidavits of escape from every jail he visited and has written proof of his ability to free himself from every lock and bond that any challenger could create? What are you, a kind of double for Houdini? Sure, we're the same. <coughs> sure, we're different. Do you love him? Is there a way not to love Houdini? Sure, I love him. And I have ideas, big ideas for him. I'm going to make him famous. 
Why don't you make something for yourself? Yes. Yes. I see a man coming towards me. Yes, men do go forward, getting things out of their women, into their women, for them, against them. There's something in the air between us, right here, above ground. I can tell your fortune. Go ahead. Here, this arm. You contradict yourself. You'll go far and you'll return. Your neck. Some people might say they're depraved, but you really mean it. Your shoulders. You want your body to find everything you can. Something sly, something loyal, something plain with all that fancy. Tell me more. Have you heard how he gave 300 pairs of shoes to all the poor boys in a town of Scotland and broke all the box office records? And then there's a new dress. Yes, a new dress. Queen Victoria died before she could wear a certain new dress. It went on sale for 150 pounds in a dressmaker's window. Houdini spied it and bought it. He sent for his mother and took over the palm garden of the best hotel in Budapest, the city she left weeping in her young disgrace. He crowned her mother queen in that dress and poured a thousand gold dollars into her lap. The jackpot. So what if he borrowed car fare to leave town? Why remember that? Houdini enters. I remember everything, don't I, Harry? That's how he knows everything. Why? What did she say? Your mother, it's not what she says. She has a quality of, I don't know, it's really ecstasy. And the delicious stuffed stuff, a target for my gallery. What does Mark know? Oh, we know, we know. Something about what you can do, Volante. Something about what you need, eh? I, who have everything, safe above you on a high wire. We won't give it away, ever, Volante. Give it away! There has to be a lot more to it than that. Up in the sky where you are, and down here, too. Houdini walks to the pillows. Houdini and Bess are in bed. Bess, waiting for him, does not speak. You knew, that first day, what the magic was between us. Between the people on the beach, the fat man, the chorus girls, the sailor, you knew what I could speak to. Fear in every muscle in people's bodies. <clears throat> I have to go further, Bess. A risk of life. Act one, scene four. River music begins. Ice, river. Music down for the following. It is an icy day in the middle of winter with the wind blowing off the frozen river. My axe is all right, and I've got plenty of rope. Six inches of it will be worth a dollar to the onlookers. The doctors ask you not to, and the theater people. There is plenty of money at stake. The river is sealed up thick like a bank vault. What of it, said Houdini. Can't you cut through ice? The stage is the frozen river. Marco Bone's axe handle slips as he stamps in the ice. Reporters and opponents of Tains gather around Houdini. Ah, uh, he's got a diving bill waiting for him down there. A log fire. Somebody go and check! Why not? Anybody? <laughs> there is silence. Too cold for you? What is it, this ice? It's water. And it isn't. It's colorless, and it's crystal, and reliable. Forms it freezing every time, eh? You're a river. Yes, you. You pour a river down your throat every day all your life. Ice? It's water that floats on water. It locks. It grows tight. It's on top. The river is underneath, flowing fast. We cut a hole in the ice. They hack and saw at the ice. There are currents pulling. There's fish and slime and seaweed and long scarves and chains and the eels. What are you afraid of? You're not down there. Cold, super cool, solid. The weight of houses, the weight of towers pressing down on you. Who's going down there? Houdini, that's who. Chains appear, and music comes up. Load them on me. Amari Lon! Song. There are chains. There is freedom. There are keys. And of these, chains are strong. Freedom's endless. Keys are great. And we are the greatest of these. The greatest of these. There are chains, there is freedom, there are keys. And of these, there are those I have seen, I have heard, and I know. 
I have seen, I have heard, and I know. There are chains, there is freedom, there are keys. And the greatest of these can free the world. You're telling them something they want to hear. I'm just doing it. You're saying it with yourself. They chop a hole in the ice. Houdini lowers himself through it. That is the great plastic sheet raised above him to the height of the stage, which now becomes the river. As he sinks, he struggles with the chains and cuts them off from the floor of the cold river. The sheet swings forward to face the audience. Houdini makes for a hole in the ice, now between the audience and himself. Guard the river base, he's faking it. He's got a rope around him. They'll pull him out downstream. Nobody can live in water that cold, not more than a few minutes. He's got a car waiting for him somewhere. Set up searchlights. No, 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 he's really under there. Song. Down, down, silver, green. Down, down, silver, brown. Silver, brown. Silver, green. Now the teeth. Silver, low. Now the gold. Silver, blue. Silver, low. Now the dread. Silver. Silver. Now the beast. Silver, blue. Silver. Now the teeth. Down, down, silver, black. Door to the air. Black. No door. Black. The rope! Try the rope! The axe! No! Chains of water! Dread! Breath! No, no time. time! No one. Fight free! Up air! Ice black! Ice black! Fight free! I'll hack this river open! Fight free! Too late! Up air! Too late! Fight free! Extreme! Up air! Extreme! Ice black! Ice black! Read all! Fight free! Up about it! Fight free! Houdini dies! Up air! In the ice! Ice black! Ice black! Houdini, Houdini dies. dies! Fight free! In, in the, the ice! ice. Houdini dies in the ice. Houdini dies in the ice. Houdini dies in the ice. There are doors of ice. Doors of ice, doors of wood. A colored door, a pale door, an ivory door. Beatrice appears as the doors pass. She hears the death of Houdini cried by the newsboys. Houdini stands there, naked, dripping, trailing a branch of seaweed. I had to. Get through to you. Beatrice rushes to embrace Houdini. The telephone rings. Houdini goes out, goes to the phone, picks it up, and talks into the phone. Oh, Mother. Yes, I'm fine. There are pink streamers of light. Oh, I'm home, holding the fort. But I'm with you, wherever you are. Houdini hangs up the phone and comes back to Beatrice. She stands, frozen, hands over her breasts, afflicted physically by this. The words overtake her. What are you trying to do? God, Jesus, killing everything? And the goddamn fucking sun! What about the sunlight? And me? And me? What about putting yourself in the goddamn crawling river comes, they yell you dead! And your river wife, river mother, and you bloody... Jesus, you know you could make anything, life or break through, you blazing man you always were. But you make fucking sin, suicide, that's a deep... Why do you do it to me? Did I pay rivers? Houdini tries to enter the telephone water. What makes you think you could find any hole? Anywhere! Beatrice really sees him now. Dripping life, life fucking, but you deny? 